Welcome to A Tale of Two Cities, a special series on Vion. The series dissects the urban, cultural and economic landscape of megapolises around the world. We'll travel around the globe to learn and share our experiences as citizens of two distinct nations. With an influence that has reached a global acclaim, renowned architect and urban planner Deekshu Kukreja takes us on a scintillating journey to eight cities of the world, talking to presidents, prime ministers, mayors, and questioning the ways in which we thought of them collectively. Today, he looks at Mexico City in Mexico and Mumbai in India. Let's go over to Deekshu and see what he has to share with us. Mexico City is one of the oldest continuously inhabited urban settlements in the West and the fifth largest in the world. While most cities have been built close to natural resources, the origin story of Mexico is something out of a fairy tale. As the Aztecs sought expansion, they decided to build a grand capital city. It was prophesied that wherever the apparition of an eagle carrying a snake perched on a cactus will be made, the place where it drops the snake will be the site of their capital. In 1325, the prophecy came true. The saints did see the apparition. The only hiccup though was that the eagle dropped the snake in the middle of a lake. Undeterred, the Aztecs built their great capital city of Tenochtitlan in the middle of Lake Texaco on a network of islands which became the largest on earth at the time. When the Spanish conquistadors arrived, they destroyed the ancient city and built another on top of it. And thus, the basin of the lake became the foundation of the city we know today. The culture of Mexico is a unique blend of indigenous practices fused with Spanish colonial aspects. A group of seven islands was stitched together and with the rapid transformation in the 19th century, Mumbai transformed from a pastoral landscape of coconut groves and rice fields into a teeming industrial and commercial center. Mexico City and Mumbai have seen similar trajectories of growth in terms of urbanization. Is it thus safe to assume that the challenges that both the cities face today in terms of urbanism, sociopolitics and climate change too are comparable? The tale of two cities, Mexico and Mumbai, is a tale worth unraveling. And here, to help me course through this exploration, is the mayor of Mexico City, Claudia Schinbaum Pardo. Mayor Claudia Schinbaum Pardo, it's such an honor to be here with you today. We have been back in India also discussing about all your achievements, all the important decisions that you take, and being the mayor of one of the largest cities in the world. So we are honored to be here with you. So I'm going to begin by talking to you about Mexico. Mexico City still holds a very important aspect that people know that, you know, there's a huge culture behind it. And we would like to know a little bit from you really about this city's culture, its traditional values, its uh, code of honor, etc. Just tell okay. us more about it. Well, thank you very much for the interview. Uh, it's an honor for me too. Okay, uh, Mexico City, we have, uh, it's uh, 9.2 million people, but the metropolitan area is 22 million people. Uh, we have a very long history. Um, the first civilization is Cuicuilco. You can go to the south of the city and see a circular pyramid. Um, it's about 800 uh, years uh, before this era, um, so it's about 3,000 years almost. Mexico City, its, uh, it's richness is based on diversity. In Mexico, there are 68 uh, languages. 52 of them are in Mexico City. Because we, ha we are a city with a long uh, 
migrations from many parts of the country. Mumbai in that sense is also a melting pot. That's it's right. a city in India where people, it is known for migration. It is known for how people have come from all corners of the country and settled for a better life. And one of the things that I find commonality or very interesting in both the cities, if we were to talk about food, and yes. in Mumbai also, from the origins, uh, if we see it was a fishing community, but then the way food changed there was all a reflection of the people. The, the diaspora that migrated to the city brought its own variations, experiments, transformations in food. And of course, when we talk about Mexico, Mexican food is, I think, popular all around the That's world. Right. In fact, I believe that in UNESCO, it's an intangible uh, right. world uh, uh, heritage. heritage that That's right. So tell us a little bit more about Mexico. Okay, in Mexico City you can find uh, whatever you want from Oaxaca, from Chiapas, from Quintana Roo, from Yucatan, from the north of, of the country. You can find it here. But you can find also the typical things from Mexico City, from, you know, the ancient culture and also from new culture. Um, there are two restaurants that are cataloged in the one of the, uh, the two of the 50th uh, best restaurants uh, in the world, but you have also um, a rural part in Mexico City where you can find tamales that it's made of maize. The country is known by its food world over, so that's, that's quite remarkable for a country to set an identity just even through its food. And the other identity I think that world over people know about Mexico is its textile, that's its right. fabrics. And one of the amazing aspects that I found when I researched about Mexico and India was the commonality of ikat. The, the fabric, how that is uh, design of fabric that is used of ikat in both the places. And again, in India, that has been very, very popular. In fact, your traditional co costumes seem to be so similar to many of our traditional costumes, let's say, in Nagaland in Northeast. So a lot to do with even fabric and textiles. Yeah, that's what do right. you have to share with us about that? Okay, we, we, most of the fabric that use, uh, especially women, uh, we call it huipiles. Uh, in Yucatan, they call ipiles. And uh, you have the diversity of the indigenous communities in, in, in Mexico. So um, the, the most diversity states are uh, Oaxaca, Guerrero, Chiapas, that are in the south of the country. And they have many uh, indigenous people, communities, civilizations, cultures, that are reflecting the, in the textile. I'm going to now talk about my favorite subject, which is the architecture okay. <laughs> of uh, Mexico and Mexican City. Now, I've been traveling around uh, Cancun, Tulum, and of course, Mexico City. And what one notices here, and it's strikingly similar to what one sees in India, and that is how you see that there is a bold use of color and color and patterns and art is something that speaks out in the architecture, which I think is fantastic because not only does it convey a place's culture, but it's able to bring in a sense of vibrancy. And that is something which is very impressive here. Um, tell us a little bit more about how uh, traditional architecture is being carried through. Mexico City used to be a lake, um, city of lakes. And uh, inside the lake, there was an island that has the most important pyramids of the Aztec world. That is the Templo Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find it uh, near the cathedral. So you have the Templo Mayor in the 16th century, and then or before, and then you have the cathedral that is from the Spanish colony, and you can have uh, the, you can see the the colonial city uh, downtown. But then you have, you know, all the evolution of Mexico City. And you can see right now, you know, the very big buildings that you have in Reforma, which is the main uh, avenue in Mexico City, that you can see a very, very high buildings. But then you have uh, also, um, you know, the very important architects of the 20th century, uh, Legorreta or Vasquez, uh, that, you know, were produced in Mexico City. And so you can have a very, also a diversity, not only from uh, before the colony, the colony, 
but you know the new buildings the other thing that one notices is that especially with your interest that uh, one is seeing in this country and in mexico city in particular your efforts at sustainability you yourself have such a strong background you have been part of the ipcc where uh, you know it went on to win the nobel prize the intergovernmental panel on climate change i think you have written more than 100 articles on mm. on uh, climate change and sustainability now in this position how are you foreseeing the future of this city um you know we have many earthquakes in mexico city so not only architecture but um the structural engineering that has developed in mexico particularly in mexico city is very very important you have new and new standards before any earthquake so um the kind of uh, buildings the especially high buildings um you have a lot of structural engineering right. uh, and developing of science uh in the architecture so that was one thing that i want to say and the other thing right now is sustainability it's uh, you know very important for all the cities for the whole world especially climate change and um i mean i used to be or part of my life life was academic and now i'm in politics and um for me it's very important to uh to see the city development as uh the three pillars of sustainability which is economic development reduction of poverty and uh, inequalities and at the same time a better environment for the city so you have to have the three pillars in order to develop a plan for the city i know that you are uh, you know at the moment the architect of creating a complete transformation in the metro system yes, here right. in uh, mexico city which also is the nerve center of mobility of this city so how do you see that you know one does meet these three aspects of sustainability we have invested uh, very much in education for example as a public education as a right for people so we have developed two new universities um so young people that didn't have a space in the university now they have uh spaces for 36000 uh young people and it's the same for education but for health uh we have you know the pandemia that was uh, terrible for cities um and uh i think that only creating a public uh, health system you can have rights for everybody so i think mobility is also right if you think it that way uh, you're going to invest in public transportation always and you have to invest in public transportation that have that everybody has access to that the way that we think is that uh, people has to have rights um uh for development absolutely and uh we are creating that in terms of social but also in terms of um the development of the city for the future uh, right now for example we have a territorial um plan but what we are going to do we have already the plan but we are going to create a participatory democracy so we are going to go um uh col- colony you say um yes with space by space in the city yes. to ask people if they are agree or they are not and what do they have to say for the territorial plan for the city for the next 20 years in today's episode we are looking at these two mega cities really mexico city is considered among the, probably the fifth largest city in the world and mumbai city is also uh, one of the largest in the world now these kind of cities what kind of actions are taken here towards again climate change and sustainability the two big challenges every time every year mumbai faces is the moment the rains come you have heavy flooding that takes place and you also have a uh, water le- uh, levels which become higher and higher so these kind of problems are really an effect of global climate change on the city how do you see uh, mexico city being able to do that because in mumbai already some actions have started to be taken and india also as you know is strongly committed yes. to meeting the cop norms uh, cop norms that we have uh, committed to so the countries may making major transformations what's going on here in mexico city which can have a positive impact on the global climate 
Okay, so um, we have our own uh, mitigation plan and adaptation plan uh, for, for climate change. Uh, we call it environment and um, climate change plan for, the, for six years and then after that. Um, so we have especially mobility uh, to reduce emissions from mobility, that it's the main uh, emission source in Mexico City or in the metropolitan area. And then uh, we have a plan for um, uh, renewable energy, uh, also um, a plan for energy efficiency, and at the same time um, a plan for water management, for um, the, still the rivers that are in the city uh, to clean that rivers. Uh, so our seven points that are related to uh, we are reforesting the the city. We have planted about um, 30 million plants and trees in four years or three years and a half. We have water problems. What we could have. Uh, worse problems sure. we haven't taken actions yeah. to to that mm -hmm. and I think it's related to uh, both our scientific background and at the same time you know uh, our thinking that uh, rights have to be for everybody if you had a magic wand how would you change Mexico City with that magic wand to reduce poverty it's the, the first one but uh, if you think as um, an environmentalist and um, thinking that at the city to have um, small communities that have everything inside, right? Um, Self-sustained communities. Se that's right. Anyway. right. That's right. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. I think that would uh, help for mobility, would help for everything. Right, and absolutely. Right. And we also in India post-independence started following this, what we call it, the Western model. That's exactly right. the same thing that, you know, the planners took a city plan and just put in these different right. land uses in different parts of the city. And now we are going back to the That's age-old right. uh, practice of being able to create self-sustained mixed-use right. communities. So like, it's good to hear yeah. that it's happening on both sides of yeah, the planet. Here, for example, we have an industrial part, and we just create uh, uh, the possibility to build uh, buildings and households there yes. uh, for the workers that work in that uh, industrial part. Right. So uh, that's what we're doing right now to have mixed uses. As an architect, what do you think of vertical cities? Uh, taking into account uh, like Mexico City of Mumbai. Mumbai, of course, is one city in India which has skyscrapers sort of, uh, you know, reaching the sky or at least the tallest buildings of India come up in Mumbai City. Today, population has increased manifold and land is becoming a scarce resource. Yeah, yeah, it is yeah. a finite resource. So I personally think that vertical cities is, is the way the future holds for us. I think what we need to bring into these vertical cities is that culture, that a sense of community. So even if you have, let's say, a residential condominium tower or an office building, you should be able to create community spaces within that vertical building, which allow people still to come and interact with each other. I agree with you. Um, I think migration control has to be with the development of other uh, development poles in the country, right? Yes because people are migrating for necessity. So you have asked me about the historical importance of Mexico City. So now I ask you, what's the historical importance of Indians, especially in Bombay? So I think there are very interesting parallels between Mexico City and Mumbai. Even if we look at historically how these two cities were established, really going back into the story of Mexico City and, you know, being a lake and then the city getting developed, even Mumbai was really just a few islands. And up until the Portuguese had them, uh, the, when the Portuguese were colonizing these islands, there was no development. It was just rice fields and, and open land, which was for farming. But later when the British came and then the policy of really joining or stitching together these seven uh, islands together, and then development started here in this area. And soon it started becoming more and more the financial 
capital of the country. Like Mexico City, and now uh, Mumbai is a melting pot. Really, when we search and we dig deeper and deeper into the history of these two cities, we find tremendous similarities in how they have evolved historically and even today in current times, the kind of position of power, so to speak, or significance that they hold in the entire world. So thank you very no, much. Thank I you think very much. this has been such an engaging conversation. Oh, great. And we <laughs> hope in times to come, we can bring in an idea exchange which can start happening at different levels between people to people, government to government, and we can learn from each other to solve the problems That's or right. challenges that You're both right. the cities have. My discourse with Mayor Claudia Shinbom Pardo revealed many a fold the similarities between both the cities. Mexico City and Mumbai are quite literally on two ends of the globe. Yet, they are a befitting example of how people living in these cities, even though tens of thousands of miles away, can share a similar historical past, as is seen in the use of stone emblems in their temples. Most importantly, Mexico City and Mumbai face an existential threat due to the imminent climate crisis. Mumbai is in a need for immediate mobilization of relief for frontliners whose industries are at the risk of sudden cessation, especially the fishing community who are already facing a depression in their trade. The city of Mexico is sinking at some say a rate of 50 centimeters per year, which means that the whole city would have sunk by 20 meters by 2080. This fight cannot be won alone unless there is open shared resource that can inspire change and create awareness about the severity of this crisis. It is a city which is listed in UNESCO's list of most creative cities. I think Hanover is a very special city, we are a cultural city, a city of music, and that makes us quite special when it comes to planning the transformation of Hanover.